Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop, and we're continuing work here on the uh, gantry crane. I'm cutting out the uh, coupons that go, or the end caps, whatever you want to call them, that go into the legs, and then I weld that uh, part two that goes on the ram. So I'm cutting those out on the drill press, the old Walker Turner. He's on a hole saw bit. Go nice and slow. A lot of people run these way, way too fast and burn them up. You want to really run, especially a bigger hole saw bit, you know. I'm on the slowest uh, setting of this machine. Eh, See, so you cut it nice and smooth. I mean, it was loud because there's a little, a little bit of run out and a hole saw makes an awful lot of noise. Now, this is a wood, wooden metal cutting drill press what makes it metal and wood same with i believe a lot of the old uh, delta milwaukee's the motor mounting plate has this part that adds a step pulley so it slows it down you know a little bit still it's a little quick for some things like big big drill presses or big drill bits i mean but within the capacity of the chucks that these come with you know they're fine i see these machines quite a bit at our wrecking yards around here so i'm going to start pulling these because the biggest difference like on the craftsman drill press this is just flat and you have one long belt for wood just adding the step is what typically makes it a wood or metal cutting drill press so i got that one cut out i rewired this drill today I went to turn it on and it started tripping the breaker for some reason so I investigated it and just ended up rewiring the whole thing you know don't worry about it anymore so I got this coupon cut out of a eighth inch steel I'll get everything readjusted cut another one I'm not gonna show it cuz there's a little bit of run out in this quill and it is noisy beyond belief. It cuts nice, but it, it is noisy. A big thing to watch, of course, make sure your drill bit's in the middle. It's gonna go down the hole. Make sure you can see my clamps there. Make sure the hole saw is not gonna cut whatever you're supporting it with, or don't clamp this directly to the table. Too many drill press tables have marks from hole saws and stuff like that, so. Just be mindful that that cutting edge is going to go through what you're cutting. So don't have it cut stuff you don't want it to cut. So I'll get that other one cut. And then we'll move over to the lathe where I have the uh, those stand things going. And I'll bring you back. Okay, we're over here in the LeBlanc lathe. I have the uh, those spacers I showed you in a previous video checked up here. Now, I don't know what these are for. I have a whole bunch of them. I got them in a bucket from the wrecking yard. Not only are these not very round, the thread and the hole that's punched through them is not in the middle. So, um, and the quill, unfortunately, on this uh, lathe has a little bit of slop to it. So, you're going to hear a little bit of rubbing until we get into it. But uh, for what... What we're doing for this project, everything will be fine. So, we're going to drill it to, oh, about a half inch deep. We're just going to go off, let's get this out of your way. Not that that really matters, but just get it out of the way. We're going to go a half inch deep, just based off the marks on the quill. A little bit of cutting oil on this. Get the lathe fired up. We'll get that knocked out. Go in until it touches.
There we go. Back this guy out here. I sharpened that drill on the uh, bench grinder and actually cut very, very well. That was about four rotations of this tailstock. It's about half an inch. So I got the machine off. Let's pull the piece out here. Put back my loose in the tailstock. A little bit more. Bring it back. So, see if you can see that. There's a bunch of Loctite or something in there. You can see the shelf there. Right there. We punch in about a half inch. Still left that much material. Probably about, oh, three eighths or something. So yeah, they'll fit nicely over those rams. Actually, yeah, I'll go put in the ram and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we're back at the ram. You can see the hole where obviously we're gonna put the bolt. So we're over there Then there's that step. And there we go. That's bottomed out in there. And we're well past that paint line. We stood back up here. So we're down to here. So there's plenty of meat in this guy to uh, still have some structural integrity there. So I'll get the, re the other one cut and chamfer it a bit. Bring it around over here real quick. I got the other leg welded on. They're both cut to length. Have it up on Jackson's. Oh, by the way, uh, Harbor Freight, these are six ton. That one and this one. Harbor Freight issued a recall for a bunch of three ton and six ton floor jacks. Uh, on their website, they show the serial numbers. And if you uh, have some within that range, you take them back to the store. They give you a in-store debit card thing, plus a coupon. So that's just a, a side note. I saw the jack stand that reminded me of that. So if you do have some Harbor Freight three or six ton jack stands, the gray or the red ones, you might want to uh, look that up. So, tomorrow, we'll get those uh, things welded on. I'm actually going to cut four coupons. Because I want to seal the bottom, of course. Because this has to go there. But I also want to seal the top so, you know, rain and stuff doesn't go down in there. So, we'll get that final welded. And then, uh, pretty much the top is done. And then all we have to do is make the... Uh, the part on the bottom to capture these so they don't you know kick out one way or the other and we can call this i'm not gonna paint this i mean i'll clean up where i welded and stuff with some primer and i'll paint the whole thing a primer but it's a it's a gantry crane i'm gonna use it in the field so yeah we are almost done with this project this is adam from small town machine shop please comment like and subscribe and thanks for watching